Hello happy campers and welcome back to Dr. Clumber in Command Off. And this time I'm going to look at the Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts game. This is very much an alpha game that is uh, still very much in production, but in my opinion has a deep potential to become one of the best strategic games of 2020. There, I've said it. I might be completely wrong, but we will find out soon enough. And you can have a look at this game with me as I play around with it. Uh, it's the British Empire, and we are going to fight the... Ooh, Japan, Japan. Right, this game is very much in its infancy, and that is absolutely fine. We are going to design a ship, and we're going to take that ship and fight another ship. So far, so good, right? Um, yeah, so... We can. We've got all these components that we will and uh, that we need to put on. That we will put on, and we've got all this as well. And there's so much to this game that is, it's literally mind blowing in my opinion. And I'm 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 pretty happy with it already. Uh, but the actual gameplay, if you like, the keep coming back element isn't quite there yet. I don't think. So we are building a battle cruiser, and we're going to build a fairly light setup um, and we are doing that on purpose I would like to build a battle cruiser that can go toe to toe with other battle cruisers and has a lot of speed I can change speed here and we're going to put it to 40 knots it's one of these slider jobs that always annoys me but that is fine um, we need to put funnels on to make sure we can get rid of the smoke there we go, and I think that is already the foundation of a good looking ship. Right, then we need to put uh, our guns on. Let's see, just for my, yeah, okay. Centerline guns, I am going to run um, a happy medium. So you can go really massive 17 inch guns, wonderful, but they're very slow. In fact, they are really slow. They only fire once every two minutes and 16 inch fires just uh, under every one and a half minutes huge difference 15 inch fire uh, the same as 16 inch roughly but they lose a bit of distance um, and then you have the 14 inches and they fire every minute and I think that's what I'm going for you still get good range 22.7 you still get pretty good penetration so that's the uh, standard I'm looking for and I've realized whilst playing this game I've not played it a lot at all yet that triple barrels have a disadvantage over double barrels when it comes to um, accuracy and all that and rate of fire as well so I'm going for double barrels which is possibly not the most exciting, but it will do the job. I think this ship will have to focus on secondary guns more than anything else. Oh, yep. We're going to put a bar bed, a tall, super imposed bar bed. Is that going to be big enough to carry a 14 inch? I think it may well be. Yes. Good. So that's that. And then we're going to try and fit in a ton of secondary guns. Secondary guns um, are a lot faster firing and they still do a lot of damage as well. They're more accurate in general as well and we want that. So we could go for I think 5 inch guns and we will we'll go for double barrel on that as well. And we're going to stick those wherever we can really. Which isn't that many, actually. I keep being annoyed by this hole, only offering me a few options to put secondary guns. Ah, I want more, I want more. Put it there. I'm looking at the pluses, and I should just ignore them. Um, because, frankly, that is absolutely great. And um, we could put some at the front as well. Put them right there. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times two is fourteen times two, twenty-eight secondary guns, and we've got six main guns, and that should be fine. 
Um, we could put some torpedoes on. I've, I'll be frank, I've not learned how to use them yet. We're not going to. Right, we have quite a bit of weight to play with, but that will change. First things first, we're going to have to go and choose our engines. And double reduction gears can now be used on steam turbines, increasing further their performance and reliability. And the acceleration is nice, the ship repairs is nice. That I like. We're going to go for that. Semi oil fuel. Uh, we're going to stick with semi oil. Do that. And auxiliary actually help us turn the turrets quicker. And we will put that on. So I'll show you how to do that in a second. We'll put on a diesel engine. And we need a shaft. There. So that's changed our weight profile a bit. Not a lot because we have gone for the um, for the lighter engine. And then we will have electrical turrets. Which basically mean that our turrets turn around a lot quicker. It increases our risk of damage as well. But I think we'll be fine. And then this is really cool. You can have automatically loaded guns. Which will really, really increase the um, uh, reload time. Or decrease the reload time. But also increase the turret to first speed. And we're going for a happy medium here. We're going to save 10% on the reload. But it's going to make the turret to first and gun aiming speed a bit less. That is fine. <coughs> Right, I'm not going to play around with anything else there other than the um, propellant and we're going to use tube propellant. I had to think of the word there, but yeah, that's basically what that is. That's the stuff that pushes the shell out. We're going to have a really good range finder because we just decreased our gun aiming speed and I really want my accuracy to be really good. Do, 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 do. I think we'll go for that. That's added to our weight a bit. We're going to go and have sonar so we can find torpedoes. Yeah. And we're going to have a radio so that we can chat to... Uh, uh, I don't know who because we're sailing on our own. Right, in terms of armor, I would really like to try and hit 11 inch belt armor, which we can. And 5 inch extended belt, which we can. The deck is really... HMS hood blew up. Because it had a tiny deck armor, we're going to try and avoid that. We're not going to do that with the extended deck though, so we'd, we're running a risk. But, you know, we need to make a compromise somewhere. The conning tower we can actually make uh, 9 inches. And the turrets I want better as well. 11 inch. And the top of turrets, this is really important. If I get shells falling on top of the turrets, they will blow up and they will basically blow my whole ship up. We really don't want that. Right, I think we have a decent ship. Uh, I'm just going to see if I can get the four weight offset better. So you can see here we've got a 4% four weight offset. And I think we can just about improve that. Yeah, so we were there, we could put it there, and then we got 1%. Good. Just over 40 tons, well, just under 41 tons. Oh, I forgot something completely. The croup armor will reduce our weight and increase the strength. And it will increase the cost, but because we're not playing the economic game, <laughs> we can do that and not worry about it. We've just lost 4.5 tons, I want to say. Um, so that's pretty damned good. We're going to have anti torque We're going to have a triple button triple bottom triple hull bottom uh, that's difficult to say for a dutchman and we're gonna have anti-flooding and we're gonna have citadel protection Oof! damn that's a shame uh, ah good do we no we can't squeeze that in okay good so we now have a ship that can run 40 knots and uh, the Royal Alfred. There we go. Alfred Yudokus Quack was a Dutch cartoon character. And that's now the name of the boat. Um, yeah, we've got a ship. 
uh, we've got capacity. We, we're really well protected for a battle cruiser. Let's go and fight. It's about time. Click launch. Some parts are badly placed. No, they're not. Launch. There we go. It does that when you're still in the build menu. Like I said, it's very early alpha. And that is just the way it is. Six twin twelve in main. Hmm, okay. Well, that's not what we're playing with. Ooh, I like how the profile of the ship becomes clear in this image. That's really cool. And we're fighting a Japanese battle cruiser with one, two, three, four, five main turrets. And by the looks of it, a bunch of secondaries as well. We're in for the fight. Okay, good. So smoke is spotted to the north. What we're going to do is we're going to sail north and we're going to see if we can find anybody. I'd like to know where it's spotted. I don't think you can see it from here. No. Okay. Aha. Let's slow down. We're immediately firing at it. No delay there. We're still identifying it, and that's fine. It's at 13.7 kilometers and it's heading towards us. So we're actually going to start heading away. Because um, I don't particularly want it to head towards us with those five guns. Right, let's see what we can do. I'm going to go to times three. The beginning of the game is mainly about trying to identify the ship and see what, what's coming your way. Um, and then you can start uh, making decisions based on that. They're firing at us, that's fine. Ooh, we hit for 154. Nice. Good. We can't see what we hit yet because we don't know exactly what this ship is. So it's difficult for us to identify that there's damage and where the damage is. But that is not a bad start. And the reason we are uh, turning away is I think it is very likely that my 14 inch guns are bigger and can get further away than he can. So if you look here, we can hit at 21.2 kilometers and I suspect they will only be able to hit at about 18, 19. So the fact that they're firing at us now is fine because we're at 12 kilometers. But um, if we can get further away, we can make the most of our big guns. To make sure that we do, I'm going to put the um, main guns in safe mode. I don't want them to shoot too much. Only fire when you think you have a decent chance of hitting. Because at the moment we've got 4% and that's not amazing. That was actually not that bad either. We are locked in, so that's good. The controls for the uh, game are... Mm, yeah, this part of the game still needs a bit of tweaking, I think. I, I like the basics. I think it's got a lot of interesting uh, concepts in it. Particularly when you get to a fleet. I'm on purpose not showing a fleet battle. Because I've not worked out how to do the things that I'm supposed to do with that yet. But you can do some interesting maneuvers and stuff like that. Your screens are really important. So... Yeah, it's, it's definitely a game uh, to keep an eye on. And this would be the uh, meat of the game, if you like. This is your battles. If you think of Total War, this is where your army engages with another army. I think that whole uh, Total War campaign idea around it, hopefully they develop that for this game. That would be really, really cool. I don't know if they will or not. I've not really read up yet on what their uh, roadmap is, but I would love to see that. I'm going to run the clock a bit quicker. We're not shooting anymore. And they're not shooting either, but we have nearly identified them. You can see the BB is the designation for a battleship. I don't think it is a battleship because I didn't ask for a battleship. I asked for a battle cruiser. And there we go. We know what it is now. It's the Senjo. Oh, and it took a big hit on the back. Okay, good. We've lost sight of it. 
So that isn't useful. This sea fog is actually part of the game as well. The elements change. I've not seen it change a lot yet, but again, I've not played it a lot. Um, but yeah, we've now lost sight of it, so now we can't hit it. So even though our guns can hit a 20 kilometers range, not being able to see the enemy doesn't really help with that. We're going to start peppering it. Uh, I've now realized I can't run away and shoot the distance, so we're going to get closer. Our penetration chance is 99%. Basically, they build a glass cannon. They have no armor and lots and lots of guns. And those guns will start hitting at some point. I am... Mm, wow! Okay, I am convinced they will. I've just had a look. Um, I'll slow it down so you can see it as well. So the Senjo has 15 inch main guns. And 8 inch main guns. I suspect they have one turret with 15 inch. Maybe even two. And then three turrets with 8 inch. So that is a problem for me because those 8 inch guns, if we can just click on it, have a range of 12.9 kilometers. And we're at 11.3. So I won't start moving away again. I don't want that. I don't want those uh, 8 inch guns to start opening up on me. You can see they are. Right? He's mainly shooting those at the moment. He's not shooting his 15 inch. There's no point really for him to shoot 15 inch. Um, and that's what you could see earlier. As soon as we got out of that 12.9, he stopped shooting. So the trick is going to be keeping him at about 13 kilometers. That's going to be quite tricky, I have to admit. They're still firing at us. We hit them again. And we broke their engine. Excellent. So we've slowed them down. That'll really help with us keeping the distance that we want. Yeah, that's great. Excellent. We're going to slow down a bit. Because this is what we want to be. This is the ideal range for us. They will have to use their 15 inch. And they're not doing, they're just not shooting that at all. Um, and we can open up with our 14 inch guns. Excellent. Keep on hitting it. Boom, another flood. Excellent. We're now making mincemeat of the Senjo. As long as we keep at over 13, 13 to 14 kilometers, we're doing great. Our hit chance is pretty good at 4.6. We keep hitting it. Oh, ah. See those those 15 inch? He's only fired two shells, so he's only got one double barrel 15 inch turret on there. That's not going to worry me too much. Ooh, that looks like the 8 inch, but really? No, those were the 15 inch. Let's see that again. Because the 8 inch can't hit me. That's some 15 inch coming in there. Boom, another big hit. Good. Yeah, okay. He does have more 15 inch guns. Well, that's interesting. I'm surprised he's not used those before. Detonation, ammo detonation, fire. He's struggling at this point. And by staying out of his 8 inch guns range, he can't really do a lot. Other than every now and then throw 15 inch shell setters. So like I said earlier, those big guns look really cool. And sound like they're going to be the best option. But actually it can be a big disadvantage as well, especially at this sort of range, because of the limited amount of shells you can put out. And he's just missing us as well, so his range finding and all that is not up to par with mine. Good! 6.5% chance to hit here. We need to keep it at 13 to 14, so we're going to slow down a bit more. Might even turn in a bit. We're going to turn in just a smidgen. Another hit, 203 damage. Yeah, we're making mincemeat of this guy now. Excellent. Boom, penetration, fire and flooding. 
he's going to get to a point where he can't fight anymore and that is amazing for us so let's say that we had a fleet here and we had screening ships if this guy was 20 kilometers away from us with screening ships we would still see him because of the communication um, and we would still be able to fire at him from longer distance so screening ships are really important and uh, I'm beginning to understand how that how that works in the game as well which is really cool but yeah I might have to do when I get a real understanding of this game there's been a nice update I'll have to discuss it a bit more with you as we get to it I'm gonna move in aggressively now which will open us up to the 18 inch, uh, 8 inch guns but he's so damaged now that their main concern will be surviving and yeah that's basically what we want so we've accelerated we're now getting up to 35 knots an hour pushing to our incredible top speed of 40 knots and all the while we're closing in on him our secondary guns will be able to make mincemeat of him once we get in 9.4 kilometers they're more accurate and hopefully I just realized that they're 8 inch are probably secondary as well yeah they are so yeah they're more um, accurate and they should be doing the final hits if you like they should be able to pull this ship down for us if it doesn't go down before we get there 10 9.6 5 4 and go aggressive on the secondaries if we just follow the ship for a bit like that you can see the secondaries popping off now the sound isn't balanced so I hope it's not too loud but yeah this is uh, this is it this is what this game is all about and I have to admit it is really good fun it is really good fun oh I don't know why I did that steering away from him I don't want that that's it Our bigger guns are now doing a lot less damage to it because we're so close. So uh, we could switch that to AT. Oof! <laughs> oh dear. Oh, they're going down hard. There might be torpedoes in the water, so we need to be careful. But yeah, the, the Senjo has had its day. It's not even hit us once, I don't think. Oh, it's hit us once, yeah. The Senjo is basically dead in the water now, it's not even moving anymore. And that means that it'll blow up any second now. Any second now. These things are actually quite tough. Which is nice as well, you know, a warship would never go down in a hurry like the Hood did. <coughs> um, in real uh, naval warfare, it was very rare that these big ships would actually go down. They would usually just become, there we go, we've got it. They would become incapacitated and float around for a bit until someone picked it up and dragged it to a harbour. Um, yeah, so this is... Um, I keep forgetting the name, Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, and I am quite impressed. I hope you uh, enjoyed that, I really hope this game develops into what I think it could become. Um, yeah, and if you do really like it, uh, like this video, like the game, whatever, just let me know, drop a like and all that sort of stuff, and I shall see you for the next one. Bye bye!